in fantasy football, we all love the breakouts. We all love the values. But sometimes the most important thing is knowing which players to avoid in your draft. Who are the landmines? Who are going to just be a waste of a pick? And today's episode, we're talking busts. And it gets a little spicy because there might be some my guy contention. You got to stay tuned and check it out. Hey, we got a great show for you today. I want to remind you about the Ultimate Draft Kit. We've been talking about all the features you get in the Ultimate Draft Kit and what makes it special for you, for your team, for draft day. I want to talk about the tiers. We talk about tier-based rankings. You get that in the Ultimate Draft Kit. Tiers take your rankings to the next level. Tiers take players who we project to finish in similar uh, in a similar range and we break them up into groups. You know, sometimes a player might be six or seven spots behind another player when really they're just as good of a pick. That's just one of the things you get in the Ultimate Draft Kit. You can learn about tiers and a lot more at ultimatedraftkit.com. Draft with tiers or end your draft in tiers. Oh, Foot Clan. Very and nice. also, did you know that Spotify can be used in your car? Get all your favorite music now on the road with you and all your favorite podcasts as well. No need to switch between apps. Your Daily Drive is a brand new playlist, a mix of music and news made just for you. It's the best thing to happen in cars since the stereo. Take Spotify for a ride in your car today. Learn more at Spotify.com slash drive. This is Hall of Fame of Marshall Falk, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Excited to be here. Mm. Excited to be with you, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Wright. Hello. We are the Fantasy Footballers, and it is Wednesday, August 21st. We have a great show for you today. Have some buy or sell, some news, our individual bust picks for 2019. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get heated. <laughs> heated up. In the here. gloves are coming off. Busts are the most difficult of projections because the word bust just means different things. Right. To different people. So we'll try to qualify that. But when you talk about breakouts and sleepers and values, busts are the ones, uh, the, 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 the biggest statement it feels like. Yes. And it, it's such a, it's a negative connotation. That's exactly the, that's the difference. We, we mean, talking people up, that's fun. The potential of somebody, but the, the real, <laughs> the real facts of fantasy football, players you draft will disappoint. They will bust compared to their ADP. They will just bust outright, and uh, maybe they get injured. Like there's so many variables, and it's it's rough to imbue that upon someone and just say because it, it it's not necessarily you're saying that player sucks. You're saying they won't return fantasy value compared to where the market has them going. And and I I would just say that busts are you know the the coin busts the the, right. the players to avoid. That is so important in fantasy football. I think that's more important than just the uh, the breakouts. Uh, if you look at drafts and you go through, may, maybe you've got certain picks in each round that are your favorite. You prefer this guy over that guy, but they're they're both good options. It's really about avoiding the certain picks that are going to be like, oof, you wasted that. You wasted that pick. Yeah, it's, it's kind of... The way I look at mine today is, do you know as a fantasy owner what you're actually getting with this player? A lot of the times we think we're going to get one thing. Our picks today will be us saying, we think you're going to get something else than you expect. Your, There's no point in calling a 15th round guy a bust because nobody's expecting something from them. Your picks today are fascinating to me because they are the identical opposites of one another. Like the, It's so interesting because... The, and, and we'll talk about it when we get to your actual bus picks, but I they're just the inverse situations of one another. I'll uh, explain that later. I, I'm, I'm warning you, Jason. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, they're not in here to be contentious. Right. I, they're not in here to be contrarian to you guys and what you believe, even though they are. That's not the purpose. The purpose oh, yeah. is to try to color in maybe the other side of a couple, uh, the argument because you guys are so bullish on a couple of players. And I'm convicted 
that these bus picks are right, and we'll see. We'll get into it. Um, it is uh, a Wednesday episode of the show, which means... Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, Wednesdays, that means buy or sell. And today, my Bold Predictions article hit the website. Every year I put out... I sell. You're selling the article? Oh, is that... <laughs> that's what we were doing. No, not yet, Mike. Just, just ha- hang in there. I'd, I got to get the hang of this thing. But the buy or sell... Uh, I'm sorry, the Bold Predictions article, every year I put it out, 32 predictions. They're meant to be spicy. They're meant to be extreme last year uh, a couple of them you know mike williams double digit touchdowns that was one of the, the hot and spicy projections that worked out josh allen he's going to be way more valuable right. than people think they don't all hit they're meant to be spicy they're but not, they're not andy's lukewarm room temperature water takes <laughs> lukewarm <laughs> locks of the <laughs> season but let's have some fun with them today we're going to do buy or sell you might sell all of them because okay. they're bold pr- uh, predictions, but I'm going to bring a couple of them up. You guys tell me if you're buy or selling the bold prediction. We'll go through a few. First one, bold prediction from the Jets. Sam Darnold has more QB1 weeks than Mitch Trubisky in 2019. Mm. This, buy or sell. This one is tough because Sam Darnold doesn't have the mobility. He doesn't got the, uh, the feet that Mitch Trubisky has shown off in the past and you want to elevate yourself quickly to a quarterback one, you rip off a 30-yard run, or or you just have four rushing attempts in a game. It's it's going to help that floor out so much. But uh, Sam Darnold is a better quarterback than Mitch Trubisky, in my opinion. But Is uh, that a sell, then? I, I got to sell it just because of the feat of Trubisky. Same okay. same argument here. I love Sam Darnold. I lo- I've loved what I've seen this season. I agree that he's a better quarterback, but because fantasy scoring is so – in the favor of rushing for quarterbacks, Mitch Trubisky is a great runner. Now, are you drinking a water or a yoo right now, Jason? I am drinking a water. Okay. I thought you pulled a yoo out. I, I did, but I didn't want it to give me, you know, the the frog throat. I, but I, I've got it already, <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. doesn't really make a difference. And nothing makes a difference. I should not – I you know what I should do? There isn't really I milk should, product in a yoo no, I should just down a bunch of whole milk before the show. <laughs> oh, please no. Warm whole milk because Ooh. maybe, maybe somehow that would help. All right, you're selling the first one. It's like you're- Drano. It pulls it all down. Right. Just try Drano. Oh, <laughs> great idea. Uh, we do not endorse that. Um, only if my bus comes true will he go the drain <laughs> yeah, route. Uh, yeah. Mm. All right, next one. Buy or sell. All three Rams wide receivers will finish outside the top 12 in total fantasy points. Ooh. points. So you're going the route that they're all great. Yes. But none of them actually make it into the top 12. Yes. Is it? Because to me, if this comes true, they're all not in the top 12. That means that three Rams are in the range of they're 13 in the top, to 20. They're in the top 12. 14 top 13 at that point so it's certainly possible but i think one of them is able to take the lead all right and, you're and still selling? finishing the in top 12 i'm going to sell yeah I, I i like the prediction it could very easily happen we've talked about the o-line struggles there and the you know if the offense does take a step back this will clearly come true but i like robert woods i believe in him so i'm going to stick with him uh being able to be in that top 12 all right we'll go with one more bold prediction that you can both sell no. Uh, Dalvin Cook leads the NFC in rushing yardage in a healthy 2019 season. To me, this is the uh, last year Joe Mixon led the AFC. This is the I see that as the parallel here on the NFC side. I know he's got some pretty stiff competition. Yes, he does at running back, but their commitment to the run. Dalvin Cook stays healthy, leads the NFC in total rushing yardage, which doesn't mean he's the number one fantasy player. Just means that consistently he's he's uh, getting the rock. I mean, step one of being the the yardage leader on the ground is playing nearly a full season. That always helps. But man, that is, so that hasn't beaten out Saquon. The potential of Todd Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott, who is Cabo man. I mean, just just hanging out, chilling in Cabo. 
I'm going to sell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to sell, but I want to buy one. So you need to you no, you read number two. Read number no, two. Read number two. Because I want to buy. All right, we'll do one more then. Despite fewer snaps, this is the Colts projection. Colts bold prediction for the year. Despite fewer snaps, Mo Alley Gigantor. Cox. Mo Alley Cox, tight end, scores twice as many twice. touchdowns. Twice as many as Jack Doyle yes. this season. Now, I mean, this this is a struggle for me because I'm contractually obligated to buy all Gigantor propaganda, number one. If you had said Eric Ebron, I could have immediately jumped in on that oh, <laughs> just because of, of what I've had to do. E but Eric Ebron, by the way, 7 x what Jack Doyle did last year. That's Jack Doyle Going two -X. missed Come a, lot of the, a lot of the season. I love this. I'm, I'm going to buy it just because it's Gigantor. Thank you. And, it, no, and the baby hands. It's, it's legitimately possible is, that all three of these tight ends have – you know, four touchdowns at the end of the season, and maybe Doyle has two. Yeah. All right. Well, you can read all of them on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, all 32 bold uh, predictions on the site today. See if you agree with any of them. See if you buy, sell, any of them. But you can check out it's predictions for your, uh, for your favorite team. That was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Go to Pristine Auction right now. Go register an account, okay. put in the code BALLERS. You get $5 towards a, any uh, sports memorabilia purchase. They have hundreds of daily autographed auctions, so check that out. Buy or sell every week, brought to you by Pristine Auction. Searching for Baker Mayfield? Yes, yes. We'll talk about him a little bit today. He'll he'll be sprinkled in with some of these bust picks. But, what? But not, not in that. He's just part of a discussion oh, is all okay. I'm saying. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. This weekend is going to be the biggest draft day of the off season. Um, it is every year, so the majority of you are are drafting uh, Saturday or or later on. So you've got time to get into the Ultimate Draft Kit, get yourself prepared, get yourself ready, get a cheat sheet going, and uh, you can check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Let's go ahead and get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. It finally happened, guys. They did it. They got an extension done. Good for you, Dallas. Dallas Cowboys dealing with, you know what? Amari, Took long Amari enough. Cooper, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, all players that need extensions. So they did it. They got a contract extension done for linebacker Jalen Smith. The, yesterday was so funny as this. <laughs> like, if you're Jalen Smith, then was, I apologize. No, they, Congrats to you. One, good move by Dallas. Like th This was an excellent move for your defense. But the way this was teased to the media, I mean, it was very intentional of, of trying to build up hype for the Cowboys. You know, we all got the alert. The Cowboys have finally, they have an extension for somebody. There's a press conference coming. Who's it going to be? And it'll be the, the bets were running wild. Which of the three offensive players is uh, Mr. Cabo back for a new contract? But no, it was just a fish slap to the face for all of us. <laughs> Which nobody likes. You ever been slapped by a fish? No. Because we all were yesterday. Um, wait, we all were yesterday? Yes. Metaphorically yes. speaking. Because you guys are out of town. No, because of because they news. signed Jalen Smith. Oh, okay, okay. I, I got I got disconnected because I was now picturing a fish actually slapping someone, not Little somebody slapping. Because you said, "Have you ever been slapped by a fish?" Uh, which made me think that the fish had done the slapping. That would be fine. Um, I've never been slapped by a fish. I've never been slapped with a fish. It's mm. one of the things I take great pride in. I've led my life in a way where that has not happened yet. Y you. Do not soon forget your first fish slap. Uh, Brooks, can you order some whole fish to the studio, I have please? had somebody. I, <laughs> I have had somebody string a fish up to my car once and put it through the uh, the antenna, and then I didn't realize. It, oh. it was a gag from a friend. A full-on fish. I'm talking like two-foot fish through the jawbone of the fish. I didn't notice that. I drove down the freeway <laughs> with a fish smacking against my car for an afternoon. But that's... Oof. That's a story from my past, Mike. <laughs> yeah. All right, more news. Darius Geis expected to play in the Thursday preseason game against the Falcons. 
Okay. Are you expected to watch? Yes, it's my I'll, job. Yeah. Well, I want to see how he looks. I want to see how many how many snaps does he actually get? How fluid does he look? All right, Derrick Henry resumed practicing on Monday. Not a lot of Derrick Henry talk as he's been on the shelf with the calf injury. It's a good thing. Yes. Texans, running back, Duke Johnson, returned to practice after the hamstring injury. Are you taking late-round shots on Duke Johnson? Uh, uh, I'm Duke Johnson or Tony Pollard late in drafts? I would rather have Pollard for the upside that you start the season with a stud running back. I expect Duke Johnson to be a little bit more involved on a regular basis through the season if Zeke were back than, than Pollard, obviously. But I, I don't expect huge things for Duke Johnson. I don't think he's going to take over – that role he's not made to be he's he's he he's great at the role he plays a third down guy but he's doing that for a team that passes to the running back you know very little over the last five years their last place so um I'm not super excited about Duke Johnson Ravens coach John Harbaugh came out said Marquise Brown rookie wide receiver first rounder has quote a ways to go yep he had been re recovering from an injury I've heard a lot more about Miles Boykin around camp than Marquise Brown uh, I'm kind of interested in, in Miles Boykin late in drafts or off the waiver wire. Going to have my eye glancing his direction if Lamar Jackson takes a step forward throwing the football. But Marquise Brown right now is going to be a deep threat taking the top off at times. But fantasy-wise? Not this year. Probably not this year. All right, Chargers have re-signed Dontrell he's in back. Inman. Yeah, he's back. It's funny because on the show the other day, I brought up how different the offense might look without Keenan. If Keenan's hurt, Gordon Gordon's holding out. We forget Tyrell Williams is gone as well. Like right. they lost him in the offseason. Charger fans were quick to remind me that they won games without Keenan and Gordon. But I would, I, I imagine you want them on I mean, your roster. And Inman had, he had a fine year back in 2016 when they were the San Diego Chargers, you know, 58 receptions, 810 yards. I it couldn't have been a better landing spot to get some work, but not really fantasy relevant. All right, more David Montgomery hype. Mm. We can get the hype train going again. I don't know if it can. I mean, has it ever stopped? But uh, Coach Matt Nagy came out, said uh, he probably gave Tariq Cohen a little too much work last season. Said they moved him around a lot. Said that they maybe mm. gave him too much. And when you mentally drain them, um, it pulls them back physically. This could be more about how much they asked Cohen to do in terms of you're in the slot on this play. You're at a wide receiver position. You're playing running back on this down. But nevertheless, they, they believe in and love David Montgomery. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and I, I think David Montgomery is a, a solid pick. I mean, we've, we've talked this last week over and over about the success of rookie running backs. He's in a good system. He's going to be used, and he's a talented back. So I, I like... Uh, there's pretty much, when it comes to David Montgomery, <clears throat> Miles Sanders, Josh Jacobs, I think they're all actually good values right now. Yeah, I I go back and forth between Montgomery and Sanders in dynasty perspective. Um, I think Montgomery's a safer pick right now for, like, guaranteed workload from week one. I don't know what the season looks like, you know. I don't know what it looks like four, five, six weeks into the year, I think that there's a fantasy roster that would be better off with Montgomery, and there's a fantasy roster that's probably better off with Miles Sanders. But uh, right now, Montgomery should have more work from week one guaranteed to him, in my opinion, than Miles Sanders will. All right, that is it for news and notes. A reminder, Sleeper does not just break the latest news. They're the best fantasy platform as simple or complex as you need. Flexible, download today. And we're going to get into the bus. Before we do that, we want to thank uh, one of the sponsors of today's show. I have completely renovated my entire you closet. Have. You know this, Mike. This was yes. mon months ago. Getting a good pair of jeans, like your favorite pair of jeans, that's like uh, it's like winning a contested catch. That's a, it's a big play moment. And I redid all my jeans once I wore some Muggsy jeans. That's just what happened. Muggsy jeans are more comfortable than all other jeans in the world, and they don't feel like jeans. I think that's the big thing. They don't feel like wearing a stiff pair of jeans. They use uh, proprietary fabrics, a blend of these high-tech materials that make the jeans insanely soft. It does not feel like a regular pair of jeans. 
They're all that I wear. They come in this stylish fit that looks really good. It's not too baggy. It's not too tight. Um, I don't know why we haven't unlocked this secret before. Dude, if you're not wearing stretchy jeans, man. They're great. They're absolutely great. When I put them on, change your life. it was like, all right, goodbye, everything else. That's all I wear. So the guys at Muggsy are so confident that you will love them as well. They're offering free U.S. shipping and returns, so your comfort is 100% guaranteed. If you don't like them, you heard it. Free shipping and returns. Do your legs a favor, Mike. Grab your own pair of jeans that are sweeping the nation by heading to Muggsy.com and using the code FOOTBALLERS for 10% off. That is M-U-G-S-Y.com and use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. And hey, Foot Clan, you hungry? <laughs> you better be because White Castle is supporting today's show and they're supporting all of us. Support my belly. <laughs> yes. yes. We just heard they're bu- they are building one out here in Scottsdale. They are. Yeah. I can't wait. But in the meantime, I can still have my White Castle, the microwavable White Castle burgers made with 100% beef patties that are so delicious. I, you know, I was reading this this read and just, uh, you know, preparing. Like, okay, I've got to talk about White Castle. And I can't read this without desperately craving White Castle. You know, they talk about that one-of-a-kind taste, you know, that that's served on the bed of steamed grilled onions and this, oh, I just, I want them right now. You're having a moment. <laughs> I'm having a moment. And, and you, they Struggling. have, they have other flavors too. They have a jalapeno cheese slider. They have just cheese sliders. So even if you're vegetarian, look, there is a, there is a White Castle for all people out there. Uh, <laughs> from, from the castle or the grocery store, you could satisfy your crave anytime with White Castle. Go to whitecastle.com slash footballers to get a dollar off the purchase of any four or six pack White Castle sliders. Bus. <laughs> Are you telling me your crave can be satisfied, Jason? I'll never well, be satisfied. Have you ever? <laughs> you will yes. never be satisfied. <laughs> that song was about me. <laughs> I'll never be satisfied, but momentarily. Yes. Okay. In, in the moment. Until the next slider. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. We are talking about our busts, picks. There's obviously there's, there's our kind of consensus bust in the Ultimate Draft Kit. We just did the breakout show where we brought forth a couple names each. So we're doing the same thing here. Look, I guess I'm starting. Yeah, go, you're going to have yeah, to. Go ahead. Um, Damian Williams. Boo! Damian Williams is one of my busts. It does not mean that you do not draft Damian Williams, but you need to know what you are getting. You need to know what you are drafting. You might want to adjust adjust where you are drafting him. And I know there are fantasy pundits in the world who have a million shares of Damian Williams. I'm not one of them. Guilty. I'm not one of them. And uh, there's a lot of things that go into, the, into focus here. There was a small window in this offseason where I believed that Damian Williams had the opportunity necessary to return that value. That window has closed for me. It wasn't open in the beginning. It's not open now. He's got 180 rushes in his career over five seasons. He's 27 years old. Never had Fresh more, legs. He's never had more than 13 carries in a game ever in his career. Uh, did you read my note? Well, okay. Yes, he had 25 in the playoff game last year. I see the note there. I'm just saying. Regular season game, for fantasy purposes, he's never had more than 13. I'm not saying that. I feel like the argument built for Damian Williams is built entirely on the back of Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty decent argument for who's starting. The problem is you're going to see some regression in the catches last year. He he caught 95% of passes his way. His entire career, he's a 70% catch guy. That's not going to happen again. They, the team's come out and said it's going to be a committee. My eyeballs watching uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, I believe that Darwin Thompson's going to have a role carved out in this offense. I believe that they're going to use a committee. I believe that Damian Williams has proved he can barely stay healthy on a consistent basis. And I actually, I actually see some similarities to the way fantasy players might be looking at Damian Williams and the way that they look at Derrick Henry. In as much as you have a pretty big career for both players. You have a pretty small amount of games at the end of last season that were amazing for both players. And then we're trying to project forward. Is the amazing part, the reality or is the previous part of their career, the reality again, he's not going to bust. And as far as you draft him, you're dead. 
My thought is, I think he's being drafted too high. I think he's the player that represents the most risk at the running back position in his tier, and that's bar none. I mean, the team's come out and said he's going to be a part of a committee, and we have to trust that he's going to be the Damian Williams of the last five games as opposed to the Damian Williams preceding that. And that's where I'm at, and I'm happy to talk about it. Sure. It's just I think he's being drafted too high. He's, I never want to take him at the tier that he's at. I have more confidence in players like Devonta Freeman. It's hard. It's hard to draft Damian Williams. Like I, I believe that when you know this is this is when I talked about your picks being inverse of one another for running backs specifically. There is the huge debate of talent versus opportunity. You want both. Which one do you want more? Opportunity over talent. Um, and this is I, I've I've said for a long time. I don't think Damian Williams is a very talented. I mean. He's talented insofar as he's an NFL running back, right? Like, they're all talented. But among his peers, he is not special. He is not a talented player compared to the elites. I think but what makes him good, it, it is, it's 100% the opportunity. And then I'll give him credit. Like, I don't think he's the best pass catcher in, the fo in football. I don't think he's the best running back in football. His versatility is what gives him playing time on this roster. And obviously they committed some money to him and things like that. I just don't have the confidence level that other fantasy owners have drafting Damian Williams. And that's, you know, behind him, I have so much excitement over players like Chris Carson, which you can get way later in the draft. And I feel better about Chris Carson than I do Damian Williams. So I just can't see myself drafting him. So I think that, uh, he qualifies as a bust for me. Yeah, I mean, we Mike and I were in L.A. yesterday uh, shooting some stuff for the NFL League One mm -hmm. coming to a screen near you. But uh, we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about Damian Williams and you know where we stand right now. And I believe that Damian Williams will have a successful role, but that if he loses it for a moment, he might not get it back. There's just no investment in the team. And if Darwin Thompson were to take over, if Damian Williams gets a hamstring injury in Week Three. He's not one of the, he's not a Melvin Gordon type where when he comes back he's just got the job he's the he's the guy that's my worry so when it comes to him being a bust pick I am perfectly fine with that Alex Collins was this category last year Bear, didn't play in the preseason the guy no matter what compensated boom, 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 boom. so that happens to players every year Mike I I respect the fact that you disagree I respect yep. the fact that you're a big Damian Williams believer I respect the fact that you have him in your dynasty team. I do. So I, I just don't like where he's going. Uh, it's a, and then look, I get it. I see I, – I try to be realistic and see both sides of it. And just to speak to from my position, it, one, Andy Reid, I know he said – he said committee, but also over this offseason there was just praise heaped upon Damian Williams saying he's the guy. He's, he's going to have all the opportunities. He's just – now at this point, he just has to go out there and produce. Then he got hurt. And as is often to happen in the NFL, when a player gets hurt in training camp and can't practice, coaches do get frustrated. But all signs still point to Damian Williams being the starter. He was in preseason week two. He was out there for the entire first drive, then was put on ice because he's still being worked back in. As far as talent, I disagree with Jason. I think Damian Williams is actually a talented running back. He went undrafted for – Reasons that had nothing to do with him as a running back. They were off the field things. And if you, in talent and opportunity, run through the rest of the roster. Damian Williams is by far a better running back, especially in the system that Kansas City runs, than Carlos Hyde. And you have, Carlos Hyde was the original reason why people were jumping off of Damian Williams' bandwagon over the offseason. And now they're talking about Carlos Hyde might not even make this team. I like Darwin Thompson. I think he is a good player. It, but he still is a six-round draft pick, and he's a 200-pound guy. Like He can't come in and be the the beef that Damian Williams can. And so that that I think yeah, that no, Williams I, is safer. And he's, like, I think that's what he has dropped That's in what ADP. we're talking about is safety. And that it makes sense he drops in ADP because at the beginning of this offseason, Darwin Thompson wasn't on the roster. The refrain from Andy Reid was not committee-based. It, it was Damian Williams. Now it's turned into a committee. And he hadn't hurt his hamstring, so the, the every little every little sure. shot over the last couple months has reduced my confidence level in Damian Williams having a consistent workload. Things could go right for him, and being on the, that offense is worth its weight in gold. 
because even if he loses workload, he's still going to be productive. That's why this bust means to me, I would I would love to take Damian Williams, you know, after the David Montgomery, Chris Carson, uh, Devonta Freeman territory. Sure, it, there's there is absolutely risk with Damian Williams, but just to go to your comp of how you like Chris Carson more, I don't mind that. I look, I, I really like Chris Carson for this year, but in in my uh, estimation of fantasy football realms of possibility, Damian Williams can finish as a top five running back. I don't think that Chris Carson can unless he sees this. It sees a huge bump in his pass catching opportunity, which can happen, but but would be necessary for that tier. Yes. All right. Who wants to go next with I'll, their bus pick? I'll I'll go next with one that might be a head scratcher at first, right? Because I'm throwing out Kareem Hunt as a gigantic bust. Now you you might say, well, how can he bust? He's in the eighth zero round. Zero points week one. <laughs> right. Zero <laughs> points week two. Zero I points week guarantee. three. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, you're guaranteeing. I, here's why I wanted to bring him up, though. We were doing a live draft, a real draft, and Kareem Hunt was drafted in the eighth round. And I was like, what? And then I went and I looked at ADP, and Kareem Hunt is going in the eighth round. And then we did a draft yesterday, and Kareem Hunt went in the eighth round. And all I want is I want the Foot Clan – to know that you're not going to be part of that. You are, <laughs> the Foot Clan will not be partakers in drafting Kareem Hunt and clogging your bench. You will not partake? And, and ruining. It makes Formal no, ban. Formal ban from Jason. I mean, the game strategy of drafting Kareem Hunt is nonsensical. He's missing the first eight weeks plus a bye week. Okay, so the first week you can possibly play this player is week 10. Now, you're not going to play him that week. Because you don't know what the role is, barring, okay, Nick Chubb got injured in week four, and now you right. know, you're just waiting. Barring that situation, you're talking about week 11 now. And the only way you play him in week 11 is if in week 10 he comes out and was super awesome. But the reality is, he's a backup. You, yes. He, when he comes back, <laughs> he's a backup running back. What are you doing? Here's some guys that will help your team that are being drafted behind Kareem Hunt. Sammy Watkins. Okay, say whatever you want about the Lizard King. But he's... He's, <laughs> he's the king now. He he's ain't the playing. man. He <laughs> took over the uh, the top seat. Yeah, you, you want either shot on the Green Bay wide receiver two, Geronimo Allison or MVS. There, Didi Westbrook. We've, all of our my guy quarterbacks, you know, Cam, Goff, Russell Wilson. Like, these are valuable players. Not Russell. Oh, come on. Uh, don't get that I, going I guess again. we'll we'll start about we'll, Mike, we'll talk I don't about know that in a second. Oh, he is yours. Yeah. I was about to say I don't of know course. how you don't. Matt but. Burita, Adrian Peterson, there, there's it I just want it's a PSA, really. Yes. That Kareem Hunt is not going to help your team this Big year. Big name. Big name it's moves a, up the ADP. Exactly. Don't draft him Foot Clan. Let other people clog your bench and not be able to make waiver wire moves because they're holding on to a backup running back that they get to play in week eleven, they hope. And that's one that's a consensus bus for us as well in the ultimate yeah. draft kit. Totally agree. But, you know, mercifully, I was in a, a mock draft yesterday, 12th round. Oh, I mean, not that nice. not that you want to take him, but at least well, he went I, in the 12th. I'm glad you bring that up, though, <clears throat> because this is one of those things where it's like, okay, if he's available in, at my last round, I would never take a roster clog for that long. Don't. So yeah. when, when he drops in value, don't think, ooh. Shiny. <laughs> if you already have him, what do they do? Go trade him to the Nick Chubb owner? Sure. Maybe. If you Clog uh, his bench? Right. It's a, he's a landmine. All right. Yeah. Mike, you get to uh, you get so, to bring forth your great bust. Yes. I, so I will qualify it. I was making a joke. I would draft Russell Wilson before I draft Kareem Hunt. <laughs> Just so you know. But the bust. Oh, he loves him. But the bust I'm going with, it's unfortunately – because I love the quarterback, but it, it is Russell Wilson, and his ADP actually has gone down a full round over the last month. And when I, when I think that Russell Wilson is going to bust, this is him busting compared to his ADP. I'm just talking about the range of outcomes. Russell Wilson last year threw a touchdown on 8.2% of his passes. That is an outrageous number. Before that, his career... His career touchdown percentage was 5.7 before last season. Last year, that would have given him 26 touchdowns, 
putting him in the in the range of maybe you want to stream Russell Wilson sometimes, and he finishes as the quarterback 16. Since the year 2000, there have been eight times a quarterback has thrown the ball over 150 times and had that touchdown rate, that unsustainable eight over 8% touchdown rate. The average drop for those quarterbacks the following season has been 3%. Dropping down, like that's a huge deal. So like for Russell's in talking about Russell from 8.2 down to 5.2, that's a that's a really really big difference for fantasy outcome and players in that list, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. You're talking first ballot Hall of Fame quarterbacks having these huge outlier years and then seeing the natural regression that just happens after a big season. He's not going to repeat being a perfect passer to Tyler Lockett who is a deep threat. Lockett's catch percentage went from 66% to 81. Like, this was a magic year for Tyler Lockett. I'm not taking that away from him. But Lockett went from seasons of two touchdowns, one touchdown, jumped all the way up to 10 because the, the, the magic dust just happened to land upon Russell Wilson and Tyler Lockett last year. Russell Wilson is fine. If... If people are letting him slide in the draft, I'm okay taking the shot on him, but I just see massive, massive regression coming to his passing touchdown volume. Sure, he'll probably throw the ball a little bit more, but that's not the game plan for would, Seattle. Would you rather – I know, I, and we've heard it. We don't have to beat it into the ground because we talked through Russell a little bit. You guys have discussed him. Right. Obviously, Jason, you can you could get back at him here with your thoughts, but would you take Russell Wilson or Kyler Murray? Mm. because uh, I think that's an interesting situation. They went yeah. back-to-back back in the 12th round of a mock I was in yesterday. Russell Wilson's history and pedigree, like I talked about this on the show, I felt like your thoughts on Russell Wilson are painting too too negative a light, kind of like I thought Jason was painting for Matt Ryan, like you were both grading them at their basement right? as opposed to like the middle ground of like maybe he's not – that good. Maybe he's not what he was last year, but maybe he's not 16 since he's never finished there. But who would you who'd you rather have in that situation? I think I'm going to take Kyler. Uh, look, I, things didn't look great in that game, but I'm going to take Kyler based off of what the offense, what the coaching staff, they're saying they want that offense to be. They want it to run through Kyler, and Seattle doesn't want their offense to run through Russell Wilson. They want it to run through Carson and Rashad Penny. Yeah, the, the only thing I would say is when Peyton Manning lost on his – you know, great numbers that fell down after his electric passing touchdown run. Yeah, what was, he couldn't do a great year. What he yeah, he had a great year, but he he couldn't just oh he adds 150 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns because like on average Russell Wilson has three rushing touchdowns per season and last year had last zero. Year. Yeah, so sure. okay, let's say you take away four passing touchdowns, give him three rushing touchdowns and fantasy scoring, that's identical. So I, I think Russell will make it up. We've got a water bet on record uh, through the Wheel of Water app. Yes. Um, so I think he's going to be a top 12 quarterback. You don't. All you right. both sides. All right. Now I get to do this. I get to do this one. I'm sorry. Um, my second bus pick, again, it's an ADP adjustment. It's a belief adjustment. It's it's a maybe a stifling of the ADP rise. It's carry on Johnson. Boo! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You should be. I know what that means to our relationship. I know what that means to your propensity to share your White Castle with me. Mm -hmm. which, Not going to happen. No nothing. sliders for you. But this, I want. This is actually great news. <laughs> my my problem with Carry Carry on Johnson is pretty similar to the one that I brought up before. Um, but I I want to talk about a few other things. I think he's going too high. I think this comes down to a lens problem for fantasy owners. They know how talented Carryon Johnson is when he's on the field and he's healthy, and you get to watch him. And I look at the comp of a 2017 Joe Mixon a little bit with Carryon Johnson this year where nobody doubts that Joe Mixon is one of the best pure talents in football. I don't doubt that Carryon Johnson is one of the best pure talents in football. There's a reason he dropped in the NFL draft. And that reason has to do with durability concerns. If you go back to the scouting reports that you look at when Carryon was drafted, his frame might not hold up. He runs too upright. He might not hold up to the to the long haul. These are the same scouting reports that the Lions had Wait, when they drafted Carryon Johnson. He didn't drop. Drop to the second round where well, they he, traded up to get yes, him. Yes, yes, he did drop from. 
Okay, he didn't drop. He didn't get drafted in the first round, not because of talent, but because of durability. His oh, okay. talent in college was worthy of being a high first round type yes. of draft pick. Okay. His durability knocked him down, and it knocked him down in scouts' eyes. In high school, college, left, right shoulder, sprained MCL, broken thumb, while in college, ribs, hamstring, ankle, shoulder. First season. Knees and toes. First, yeah, first season last <laughs> year where he gets an opportunity, doesn't hold up. The team isn't blind. The lens that they have is one where we need to use Kerryon Johnson in an appropriate fashion to avoid durability concerns. We've seen preseason so far. That if There is a worst-case scenario for Kerryon Johnson. That's what I believe. The worst-case scenario is if you take what happened in preseason game one and apply it, which obviously Kerryon is going to be on the field and he's going to be a very good player on a very bad team, in my opinion. But if he doesn't get the third down work that gives him the pronounced target share that we want, and he doesn't get goal line because they believe in C.J. Anderson on the goal line, you've got a player that is going to underwhelm compared to ADP. Scouting report, never avoiding you know the hits. When you, Remember Darren McFadden's durability concerns? Mm-hmm. He runs a lot like Darren McFadden. Very sure. upright running style. So if it's all a risk aversion when you talk about high draft picks, and for me the risk is too high. The lens that this team is looking at him through, the other players that they picked up on the roster – the fact that I don't believe they're going to have as many goal line chances as other teams in football, I'm just concerned. Would I, you believe that I actually like your bust pick from a from a conversation piece? No, I wouldn't believe that. Well, then you're wrong. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it is somewhat important because we talk about Karen. I love Carry On. When I said earlier that the, that you have two opposite picks, you have a player that I don't believe is talented in Damian Williams who has the best opportunity in the <laughs> league versus a player in carry on Johnson who I think is so talented so unbelievably talented in a bad situation so I usually take opportunity over talent this year I'm going with my guy carry on it, 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 it honestly part of the reason I'm going with carry on is Juju Smith Schuster he was one of those guys that I just thought the talent was unbelievable yes and I didn't take him as my my guy because the opportunity seemed a little bit nebulous and you weren't sure. I am I'm buying into the talent, and I think the talent will win. But your conversation here is important because if he doesn't get the passing work and he doesn't get the goal line, there are risks to carry on. Even the carry on Johnson truther knows it. Now, here's the question I have. Carry what, on if he, Johnson, what if he gets both of those? Oh, things? if he gets both of those. Oh, 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 woo, I'm going to White Castle. Uh <laughs> If he gets none, I'm also. But the the question is, Damian Williams and Carrion Johnson, they are going back-to-back right now. So you're on the clock. You have to draft one of those two guys. Which one are you Carry taking? Carrion Johnson. Yes, good. Yes. Thank you for putting it to me that way. I have to take yes, one of my two bots. you right. Which one do I take? It's Carrion Johnson. All right. So, um, so here, my bust... To go yeah, next. Yeah, great. Oh. great. We're, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it back. Look, Carrion Johnson, he's a my guy. Christian Kirk, he's a your guy. Yep. I believe Christian Kirk is a bust for where he's being drafted right now. He has been skyrocketing until this last weekend. He was up in the sixth round. You're welcome. And on his way up. Sorry. Yeah. Um, But I don't see the – look, I love the talent of Christian Kirk. I love the future of the Cardinals in this offense. But we have to be realistic as to – The difference between Kyler Murray being successful for fantasy because he is a heavy rushing quarterback versus a rookie, even a great rookie quarterback, coming in and what it does for the other offensive pieces around him. Because the truth is, Kyler Murray is probably not going to put up enough stats in the passing game to support one breakout wide receiver so he, here's here's the examples. Here's the the data that that I look at. Okay, rookie quarterbacks they don't throw a lot of yards. There's only three. <laughs> you can't even throw a yard technically. They, they you can't don't pick throw it up and throw it for a lot of yards. It's just an idea, Jason. It's you can't throw con- ideas. You it's can't a concept. Throw measurements. You could. I guess you could throw a yardstick. I am <laughs> yes. Clearly, still correct. Then <laughs> rookies do not throw yards. They sticks. can't throw yards. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um. There's only you know three quarterbacks in history that have thrown for four thousand yards. The Peyton, the great Peyton, you're talking Manning about rookies. Out, rookies. rookies. Yeah. Uh, the great Peyton Manning comes out, throws for thirty seven hundred yards. The Vegas, look at Vegas. What do they believe Kyler Murray's going to do? Now I'm taking the over. I'm slamming the over. 
Okay, but the Caesar Sportsbook that's not trying to lose money had him listed at 2,940 passing can yards. Can I put my house on that? When, when it came out. FanDuel was at 3,100 passing yards. You can. <laughs> so but you might, not, you might not have a house. So the, the reality here is that I don't You don't believe think, the yardage will sustain a breakout. You might believe in the player, but you don't believe the opportunity and the passing yardage can mathematically add up. It, that plus the passing touchdowns. I mean, Baker yes. tied the all-time record for uh, 27, rookie right? with 27 last year. So if he throws for 3,500 yards, which would be great, and 25 touchdowns, which would be great for a rookie, those numbers are not good enough to have Larry Fitzgerald, a four-wide receiver spread thing, and have Christian Kirk break out. I don't think we have to argue about this. Right. I don't. Because I think it just comes down to what you believe Kyler Murray is going to do on the field with his, with his arm. I don't, I don't look too heavily at the history of rookie quarterbacks um, when you talk about what this offense is going to do. And, you know, Cam Newton's rookie season, he threw for over 4,000 yards He's in, 20, one of the in three. 2011. Last season, you don't get a count Baker, but he was on pace for 4,200 yards in his rookie season. Kyler was a more prolific passer and a more efficient passer at Oklahoma than Baker Mayfield was. So if you believe – here, here's what I, I – I'll put this out there. He's my guy. Christian Kirk's my guy. If you don't believe Kyler Murray can throw for 4,000 yards this year, let, let Christian Kirk pass you by. Let him go. If you don't believe that that's in the realm of possibilities, I do. I believe that this team, the defense, is atrocious. I don't – especially bad. the first six weeks of the season. We haven't seen the offense – Kyler Murray is a hyper-accurate, prolific passer. I believe he's a better passer coming into the NFL than Cam Newton was, but that team had to throw the football. Steve Smith and company, I remember that debut. Oh, Steve. But it was a fourth I was there. That was, a, that was awesome. And, that, and again, yeah. Kyler can run. Kyler's a passer first. Kyler yes. is a pass. It's not Lamar Jackson where you, you have 18 design runs a game like Lamar Jackson does. You're going to have – High pass attempt totals in Arizona because they're going to be coming from behind. He's not just he will run the football, but he wants to pass the football first. So, if you don't believe he, can, if you think he's a three thousand yard passer, you better stay as far from Christian Kirk well, as you can. I, I have him down for three thousand eight hundred and twelve yards, so he's near that four thousand. Uh, it's a great year and twenty four passing touchdowns. But when you split that with all the options, including Larry Fitzgerald, Hall of Famer, who is obviously going to get his. Um, I mean, that puts Christian Kirk for me. He's, he's wide receiver 46. Right now he's the seventh – or I'm sorry, he's a seventh-round pick, and he's basically identical to Allen Robinson and Curtis Samuel. I would take both of those guys. Hmm. Do, you, do you have anything to weigh in, Mike, or you just I, – I, I lean on the side that like, – I know you, you can't make the math add up in your head. Yeah, that's been my problem. When I go into the stats – Give Kyler 10,000 yards, then what happens? Oh, give then me what Christian happens? Kirk! Let's let's find out. Boop, 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 wow. boop, boop, boop. Kyler Murray is now my QB one. <laughs> Imagine that. All right. Okay. All right. You're, you 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 want to temper my Christian Kirk after yeah. I temper your your carry on. You get you get all the information here on this show. You get both sides of every player, and then you can actually say, "I like this argument. I like this yes. uh, data better," and uh, make make wise decisions. All right. Um, that means there's one bust remaining. There is. And Plus Mike's pick. Hey, oh. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Look, for me, it's James White. I hear, and I hear a lot of people talking. They love James White. They love scooping him up in the middle of, of the draft. They think he's a, a, an excellent value there. But here's my problem with James White and what happened last year. Uh, he he said entered his fifth year, or you know, he he entered his fifth year. Uh, last year, and he had 113 regular season carries. He jumped up. That That's how many carries he had total. He hit 94 carries just last year. He had, coming into that season, two regular season rushing touchdowns. That jumped up to five. He had five in the season last year. He had never seen more than 86 targets in a season. Had 123 last year. This nugget from good friend of the show, Scott Barrett. Last year, James White had a 21.4 target share of New England's passing attempts. Up until that point, up until James White last year, the highs for a running back were James White at 15.6%. Before that, Kevin Falk at 13.8%. Before that, Shane Vereen at 12.6%. For the Patriots. For their, yes, for the target share from Tom Brady. 
mean, that's an outrageous jump. James White, who had had 15.6, jumping up to 21.4, it just it doesn't add up to me. His career fantasy finishes, running back 41, 28, 41, 8. Everything went right. One of these things is Everything not like rent, the went other. went right. That's a hard one to say. Everything went r- right for White. That's my, new, that's my new slogan. Try it out. Look, last year with Burkhead in eight games, he was scoring 13 PPR points. Without Burkhead, that jumped up to 21 points a game. Last year, games with Sony, 13 of them. He had 16 PPR points, which is still good. But that skyrockets to 23 points when Sony Michelle's out. He took advantage of his opportunity with Burkhead missing time, with Sony missing time. Those two guys are still there. And now we are adding Damian Harris into the mix as well. Who can catch the ball. Who can catch the ball. I just don't see a world where James White sees anywhere near the same workload that he received last year. I'm not drafting James White anywhere because Miles Sanders is always sitting there or Lamar right. Miller or better choices. I, I don't disagree with your arguments at all. To me, James White is in case of emergency break the glass and inside is James White in all circumstances, like an amped up Javorius Allen who kept finding himself in situations in Baltimore where, well, it's another Javorius Allen week because we don't have anybody else to throw to. Right. So I think if things go according to plan for the Patriots, what you're saying about White comes true. I think if things go away from what the Patriots want to happen, James White will find himself as – the, the favorite wingman of yeah. of Tom Brady. So he's a more situational play where, yes. it's oh, in, man, this guy's hurt this week. This guy's out. Gordon suspended. Yeah, weeks. Bur- Burkhead can't stay healthy. Sonny Michelle has had his own injury problems. So there is there is a world where James White is, is the cheese and he's just standing alone in that backfield, just him and Damian Harris as the only healthy guys, and then he will return. But I'm not I'm not going to draft a guy in the in the fifth round Banking on, okay, these these two other guys have to miss time in order for my pick to return value. Yeah, if you look at the season totals for James White, it's very easy to make a positive narrative. But when you do look at a game-by-game basis and what actually happened week seven when Sony goes down and he only gets four carries, then James White takes over for the next three games. And in that three-game stretch, when he had the opportunity just granted to him, he had 30 carries in three games. And 30 targets yeah. in those three games. So It was insane, and he meant a lot to fantasy owners. And the yes. reward for meaning a lot to fantasy owners is an average draft position where he is right now. It's kind of like, thank you. We appreciate you. I'm going to draft you. I, and then you might – I mean, you're going to feel really uncomfortable putting him into your lineup in week one. Yes, I agree with, with that. But Because you're going to have to. If you're in a full PPR league, he's still going to be a, a guy that you can rely on for a number of catches each game, similar to how year after year after year, you could play Theo Riddick. He's not great in real life. He's not great, um, you know, for, for for fantasy, but he's serviceable. He plays a role, and you know, those if he drops in a draft in a full PPR, I would I would still look at him. But he's not, you know, he was a top twelve guy, and that's not who he is. All right, well, that those were our bus picks. We've still got a couple other shows. Brooks, how are you doing? Excellent. What what uh, other shows do we have coming up here? What are you going to tease? Give me the uh, give me the tease. Well, this week, sleepers and values shows coming up. All right, sleepers and values coming up. So don't miss that. And I wanted to speak. We we posted an announcement uh, on on Twitter. Um, the fantasy footballers are coming to Sirius XM mm-hmm, Radio. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure that this was very clear what exactly is happening with the fantasy footballers and Sirius XM. Nothing is changing about this podcast. Mm -hmm. Nothing is changing about the Foot Clan. Nothing is changing anywhere on what we do. The only thing that's changing is there's going to be an extra episode, a radio show live from 5 to 7 Eastern each and every Thursday. Live, Jason. Yeah, you hear that, Jay? (laughs) Yes. So Brooks has got the – he's got a really oversized mute Jason button over there in case of emergency. I've cut the cord on it already. And we just have a bunch of (laughs) quotes from you that we can substitute in in case you're saying something else. Uh, Carry on. Uh, Anyway. (laughs) But uh, nothing's changing. Yeah, we're just adding more. If you have – yeah, we're just adding a little extra. It's an exciting time. We get to do a show leading up to Thursday night football throughout the season. We get to take calls live on the show. We get to meander and talk about everything and anything. It's a two-hour – Live show, so you can check that out on SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Radio. 
they're also syndicating this podcast um, in the evening. So that's what's happening. If if you're if you're a fantasy footballers listener subscriber, proceed with exactly what you've been doing. And if you've got series, you can tune in from five to seven Eastern each and every Thursday on through the season. We're very excited to be on there uh, to be part of the Sirius XM family. And then we want to thank Pristine again as we close out today's show. The studio sponsor yesterday, a Super Camaria. An Alvin Camara jersey sold for $85. Autographed jersey at pristineauction.com. Make sure you go sign up. It's free to sign up. Use the code BALLERS. It'll give you a $5 credit, and you can bid on stuff throughout the year if you find an auction that you like. And check them out at pristineauction.com. Don't bid on my Baker Mayfield jersey today. Whatever you do, don't <laughs> bid on... Or do I? I ha- almost took him in the twelfth round last night. Oh. He was falling. Wow, he was well. falling. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, today's show. Brought to you by Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable men's jeans ever made, and that is no exaggeration. Muggsy's high-tech fabrics are so soft and flexible, they literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. Do your legs a favor, head to Muggsy.com, grab a pair of your own ridiculously comfortable jeans. Comfortable. They're so comfortable, I can't even say it. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y.com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off your pair of Muggsy Jeans.